Hey everyone, this is Eric here and Aviv and Butiro. We'll give everyone a minute to join and we'll get started uh, in a couple of seconds. Grab your coffee, depending on your time zone. And what I will mention for everyone that's, uh, that has already joined is that our, um, our man, Evan, in the back end is manning the booth, uh, is manning the chat. Um, so feel free to set your chats to, um, to all participants. Uh, so when you, when, you, when, you, when you chat out, actually everyone can actually see. And we will be manning that, and we will be introducing your comments into, into this discussion as we move along. Evan, Todd, are we good to go? I think we are good to go. That's... Sounds perfect. So, we're both hero. Aviv, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. So, uh... Thank you, Eric, for that. And uh, I'm, I'm Aviv Graffi. I'm the CTO and founder of Otero. And of course, that's great uh, to have that session today. I'm glad to have uh, uh, you guys joining. Yeah, and I'm Eric Avigdor, uh, complex last, last name. Don't try. I know. Uh, I run product management for the company. Aviv is the CTO for the company. We are the zero trust content security company. And we're going to talk about um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And if you're asking yourself whether we are AI and machine learning experts, the answer is no, we're not. However, we are file experts and we are cybersecurity experts. And we want to talk about AI, machine learning, and everything that has to do with that in the context of cybersecurity, what is happening in the market, trends, how it can be used successfully and how not, a few good ideas and learnings that we came up with. And let's, let's start moving along and see what we can find. Um, there you go. Great. So um, I just want to set the scene uh, for those of you who haven't been on Earth for the last probably uh, six months or eight months. Uh, and I know that uh, um, AI is kind of uh, what we're hearing like uh, every five minutes. Uh, but I think it's important to understand that there are kind of three pillars or three kind of uh, buckets where um, when we kind of uh, discussing AI, we see those. So the first one, obviously, that's consumer AI. That's uh, the ChatGPT, uh, the DALI, or the uh, image generation program, which is absolutely great. And I've seen tons of things definitely on, on social media and uh, for consumer uh, usage. And this is really great. And a lot of other things to do with that. There's a second bucket, which is how to actually leverage AI, machine learning, uh, for security and for security products. So uh, we know that the... Uh, um, Operation center assistance. We know that there are plenty of uh, um, uh, data discovery, and we know that there are a lot of security analytics and automation around security, uh, where AI is coming to the rescue. Uh, we're going to talk about that also around from the malware detection engine or, or angle, and uh, we see that as well. And the third pillar, or the third kind of usage of AI, is, as I see it, uh, is, the is AI for enterprise, and that's mainly for. Uh, kind of uh, enterprise like insurance companies, uh, like uh, um, those a lot of companies are dealing with a lot of clients, uh, um, inquiries, and how to really help and improve the business interactions and how to make way better decisions, which is also important. Uh, and there are different challenges uh, when we talk about AI and different challenges when we talk about AI for security and, of course, for consumer AI. Um, uh, we in Vatura, we mostly from the security and enterprise space. Uh, so we're going to talk mostly about the, those areas today. But of course, um, we welcome any any question, any ideas from you guys. If you want to have a chat uh, during that coffee talk on, on the consumer as well. Yeah, and we'll keep insisting on keeping this conversational. Um, send in your chats, you know, chat away. Give us your thoughts and ideas about how you're using AI and machine learning so we can learn from you guys as well. And I think, you know, to one of the things that's super interesting that we found as we started researching the broader market is that in addition to the fact that everyone is now trying to leverage um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning in many different ways, 
it's not only the good guys that are doing that, most obviously, it's also the bad guys, right? It's also the bad actors. And they're using it in very complex, very interesting ways, which we'll talk about in a few seconds. But I think just to set kind of the stage, so first, I think it's super critical to differentiate between machine learning and artificial intelligence because people use that interchangeably. It is not the same thing. The overall umbrella that covers all of these terms that you're seeing on, you know, on the slide is really artificial intelligence, which is the intention to create compute power that can mimic uh, human cognitive behavior, human cognitive decision making and capabilities. That can leverage machine learning. It can also leverage different mechanisms in order to reach artificial intelligence behavior. Today, there is a significant overlap between machine learning and artificial intelligence just because of the fact that that is the immediate way that we found to, to, to power compute and to empower compute to make decisions. Now, if we think about machine learning, what machine learning really is, is the ability to train algorithms based on a significant data set in order to improve, continuously improve that model so it can make better decisions at the end of the day, in order to perform a task, in order to perform a task with a better performance, with higher accuracy, with higher efficiency, all of those are noble goals that machine learning is used for. When you start talking about deep learning, that is where artificial ne uh, neural networks are used. That is where large language models are used. Generative AI is using deep learning to learn about broader, deeper contexts in order to make human-like decisions. This is going to play a significant role in um, the part where we're going to talk about in a minute, which is how, how bad actors are leveraging AI in, um, in their mission to, to, to breach. Um, so let's talk about cybercrime for a second before we touch on AI in the use of cybersecurity. There's been an interesting trend, I'd say, in the past uh, two or three years. And what we've seen is that if in the past, and Aviv knows this, Aviv you know, has, been, has been doing this for years with um, uh, inventing and reinventing malware and malware defenses. Um, at the end of the day, what happens is that cyber crime up until two or three years was reserved for highly specialized engineers, which had highly specialized skills in designing malware, in defining vectors into how to breach into an enterprise. That all changed. That has significantly changed. And what happened is that as artificial intelligence and machine learning has moved from becoming as well a highly specialized skill and became more of a commodity that everyone can use now with ChatGPT and with many other tools, that opened the door to many different attack techniques which suddenly have turned cybercrime into something that is potentially a commodity. That happens in two different ways, two very different interesting ways. The first one is cybercrime as a service. You, what you will find is that many bad actors are creating services that can be consumed by different actors around the world which do not have the technical expertise and do not know how to create a malicious uh, macro, for example, or a malicious file. So we'll show a few examples in a second, but the more interesting aspect is truly crimeware as a service, which is the, the shadow reflection of what the normal market is behaving like, which is if you've seen SaaS companies turn towards as a service, not only in software as a service, but services as a service. For example, service providers providing IT services, MDR is providing detection, um, detection and remediation services. The, the shadow of that world is the crimeware as a service um, world where companies are now providing ransomware services for actors that cannot um, or will not develop the skills in order to, um, to infiltrate into a, into a company. And what that now means is that any bad actor that wants to hire Cybercrime as a service for a specific project can do that at a significantly lower cost and significantly lower time. 
which I think is truly changing the whole paradigm on cyber crime. Um, a few examples. Ransomware as a service. <laughs> if I want to launch a ransomware attack on a company, I can now sign up to, and you know, this is, you can easily find this on, on, um, on the dark web and in many different areas. You want to launch a, launch a ransomware attack, there are several ways of doing that. You can buy kits, which will allow you to launch a ransomware attack, or you can uh, hook up with a service, with a company, that will be a full-fledged enterprise service that will give you white glove treatment, 24-7 support when you need to bring in the funds that that target will be paying you to release the ransomed data. So they will be providing you the 24-7 the support for you and for your customers that will need to pay you, as well as financial services and financial techniques to bring in the money through Bitcoin, or whatever the, the mechanism is. Same goes for phishing. Um, phishing kits are available all across the dark web to be used as a service. Uh, same goes for denial of service attacks. If you want to bring down a website, you hook up with a service, they use botnets which leverage AI in order to, um, to, to create and generate denial of service attacks. Now, how is all of this related to artificial intelligence and machine learning? It just makes it easier. It makes it super easy because if you think about a phishing attack, when you use a capability like ChatGPT with large language models in order to mimic human behavior, in order to make an attack look more reasonable or less threatening, you are much more likely to succeed on an attack. Right, and, and I think that one of the examples for that is that uh, obviously I can ask ChatGPT to write me a beautiful email that asking someone just you know to, to wire funds to to my account and uh you know we all remember the days where we had tons of grammar mistakes right on those phishing emails yep. not anymore right this is one of the the problems now the other thing is uh and and i saw that experiment just asking ChatGPT, can you please uh, generate uh, a ransom email so all that all those uh, um, uh, texts that actually you need want to ask someone to why even pay for bitcoin you can do that very easily you want to do that in 28 languages that's easy within one click so those bad actors that previously the either you had to tailor their uh, um, font and kind of uh, uh, language uh, they're now doing that uh, way easier and this is one aspect another aspect if you want to think about for example uh, malicious domains mm -hmm. uh, there was a significant increase in uh, uh, malicious domain related to to ai and ChatGPT. So to lure people, click on those kind of uh, uh, you know commodity services. Another angle that if I'm a bad guy, I want to just buy file of domains for my malicious activity. Now I can just ask, okay, so generate one thousand domains that maybe they have some grammar mistake or some mistake that actually synonym with Microsoft, something very similar. So you don't need to actually think about, okay, how do I why, why do you generate a list of domains that maybe someone would be mistaken uh, clicking that one instead of uh, Microsoft or Google or some others? So there is uh, some bad usage of those uh, kind of uh, um, uh, AI models. And, uh, you know, uh, here in Botir, actually, on the first week when ChatGPT was released, that was several months ago, uh, uh, one of our support guys, actually, he told me, that, look, that's that's freaking scary. I could just ask ChatGPT to build a malicious macro for me. Two days after that, ChatGPT was just blocking that. They were trying to block that thing. Yeah. Just saying, okay, we're not allowing to use ChatGPT for malicious purposes, but we're going to talk about that as well, because obviously the bad guys are faster than yeah. the ChatGPT guys. And you know, we have to say we're just opening here a small window to how AI and machine learning are used on you know on a daily basis. This is um, we're turning this um, discussion into a series of discussions. Uh, which will evolve throughout the next few months, and we'll be coming back with more coffee talks on this specific topic to dive deeper into every single one of these topics. So everything we're talking about now is super high level, but we will be diving into those. You know, one of the interesting things, talking about phishing or smishing, I continuously get SMS uh, text messages from my CEO uh, saying, hey, Eric, it is name of my CEO. Can you give me a call back? 
I've seen in the past few months how that smishing attack is evolving to actually in, include content that is relevant for me, that seems as if it is coming from my CEO. That is definitely something that is either, either used by a person behind the scene that is hunting me or by AI that can collect data about me. Now think about the day where AI can launch a multitude of attacks like that because you don't really need to know much more about that person or do threat hunting in person. You can actually allow your machine learning uh, algorithm to do that. So with that said, I do want to mention in the context of what Votero does, we've seen lately from, and th this is coming from Palo Alto Networks. Uh, they have a threat trends research called Unit 42 uh, for network threat trends. And they concluded um, in their research, research that 66% percentage of all malware is actually delivered through email attacks through PDF files. And if you think about how AI is used or is being used by attackers that could be used in so many different ways. The first way is building the PDF file in a way that would circumvent your antivirus. It could be used to build a PDF file that looks like something you'd be more likely to open. It could be crafting a message using AI that would make you more likely to open the PDF file. It could be so many different ways of increasing the likelihood of someone of actually launching that file, poisoning their network, poisoning their, uh, their endpoint, which is why us cybersecurity vendors need to evolve as well. Let's move on. Yeah. So actually you mentioned one of those uh, uh, phishing schemes. So one area where AI and machine learning works pretty well it's actually on the phishing. So for both ends, obviously we mentioned like generating something that looks very genuine, like Netflix, please add to your payment details. But on the other hand, and we see a lot of uh, security companies, and we said that we're going to talk about security or how AI improves security. It's uh, actually helps uh, security companies and, and technologies actually to fetch those malicious uh, uh, phishing attacks. As it's very easy, like to ask an AI model, okay, what is the context? what I've been asked to do here. And by training, uh, like, um, you know, with the language processing, natural language processing uh, model, you can actually say, yes, this is asking for a uh, payment update. And then you can actually exclude or do something with it. So this is where actually AI ML works. And thanks that thanks to the fact where we have a, a data set and we're training the model and say, okay, this is an artifact. Can you tell me whether this is actually similar to what I'm seeing in front of me. Is this phishing, is this email looks like phishing? What is phishing? That's how we train the model. And uh, uh, just, just to address uh, one of the things that uh, uh, previously uh, we talked about, about the uh, Dartford, is that uh, um, it's actually training uh, like uh, on the dark web and then asking things on the dark web, which is the same thing. It's like, this is my data set and I wanna see whether this is similar to what, I'm, what I'm, something I've seen like sensitive information being linked or something that uh, uh, malicious. Uh, so this is where actually AI and, and ML works. And But on the other hand, of course, it's actually uh, create the same problem if something is not uh, uh, similar and something that I haven't seen until now. Uh, something that I wanted to mention, this is actually a very famous uh, uh, school bus and, and experiment done, I think almost like uh, eight years ago by uh, Google, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's actually how you can trick neuron uh, learned network and, and deep learning model that actually know how to detect an artifact in, in an image by adding like invisible noise. You can actually convince that model that this school bus is Austrian. So this is definitely uh, where AI and ML actually can might fail mostly around the false positives. And it's important to mention that AI and ML are as good as your data sets. Right. This is extremely, extremely important to understand that. And we're still seeing a lot of uh, security products that generate a lot of false positives because of that. And we're seeing a lot of AI ML based product that actually looks perfect on in testing because that's the exact same data set that they were trained with. But in the real world, it behaves a bit differently. That's why the uh, distribution of the data in the real world is very, very important uh, when we talk about AI and ML. So, this is one example. Obviously, the same experiment was actually extended, and you can see here where um, a certain model can detect a school bus, but it might think that uh, 
uh, the same bus like like flip on the side it's a garbage truck or even a punching bag uh, same goes for uh, scooters and some other uh, things that you can actually as a human you can easily say yeah that's exactly the same thing but uh, as a trained model it's uh, sometimes you see the where it lacks the accuracy as we see as humans so with artificial intelligence it's Yes, an artificial intelligence. And then th I think in a second, we'll see how we at Votero use AI and machine learning. And we, we've learned throughout the past two years exactly how the right data sets will result in the right models and the right uh, cybersecurity defenses where the wrong data model not, might actually do the exact opposite. One important thing that uh, I want to mention here, uh, another aspect is how you train the model and actually uh, how you feed that data into the model and what it's, it's in the data. Actually, as I mentioned that one of the support, they say, yeah, we can ask uh, ChatGPT to build a macro, malicious macro. Actually, if we feed that with the uh, um, sensitive information, we can trick the model actually to fetch and to extract that sensitive information back to us. This is a really cool game, but one of the uh, uh, AI security companies out there, uh, which uh, like you, you need to actually to trick the model uh, to give you the password. And they're demonstrating them uh, that, that we're using that game that you can actually, you know, put some controls and maybe some filtering. But uh, as a human, it's very easy, or eventually it's easy uh, to trick model and with the uh, uh, natural language uh, to actually extract that sense of information. And you think about enterprise AI, we talked about that. When you feed like uh, customer consumer data, customer data into a model, you train that. And then you have the risk of someone to actually to extract some of the sensitive information out of that model uh, where the previously trained data uh, is. So this is a really cool game. Maybe one of the uh, marketing folks can, can share the, uh, the link to that. Uh, actually, it killed, it killed um, several hours uh, for me and for my <laughs> wife during the weekend. So this is really cool. Yeah, and, and we, we urge you all um, uh, on the audience, try out, Evan is posting now, I think it's uh, either Evan or Kathleen are posting the, um, the link, try this out, it really gives you some, a deeper understanding of what machine learning really is all about and how you can treat it. Yeah. And just before we, we go to the next slide, I think that uh, the other risk that I think uh, uh, that game also posing is uh, how you train the model and potentially whether you can maybe poison a model. And um, for example, one of the uh, things I've uh, read recently is that GPT is trained using Wikipedia mm -hmm. data. And that Wikipedia, I mean, the GPT-3, I think that's from 2021, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the way that Wikipedia works, they actually helping those who use their data to train the models. And how they do that, they just archiving Wikipedia once every few days or weeks or months. And everyone knows that they're doing that. That's for certain dates and, and hours. Now, if you would just change one of the Wikipedia pages or adding one of your own uh, with the poison data, and and just you know minutes before it archived the entire Wikipedia, that would be fed into the model. So eventually, I can say that uh, um, a certain company is a great company, or a certain stock is a great stock, and actually that's the best performing stock in the history. And if I would ask that model, what is the best performing stock in history? Right. I, I can actually poison that model and maybe I can use that for my benefit. I'm not advising anyone to do that, just uh, an idea just came up. And this is where this all connects to what we do at Votero. I think, you know, the, um, one, of the, one of the challenges for every cybersecurity company today is everyone is trying to figure out how to leverage AI machine learning for, for, our, you know, for, for the good of humanity, to make data safer, to make companies safe. And it's not an easy task because AI machine learning can do a whole lot of interesting things that we didn't even start to imagine yet. And all of us are searching for the best ways and most effective ways to use this within our technology. So, one of the data points we wanted to bring up, Aviv was just talking about poison data. Let's talk about what, what, you know, what that is. What exactly is that? So if you think about a machine learning model, at the end of the day, a machine learning model is, a, is an algorithm that learns from data and evolves through data. So it is not a fixed algorithm. It is a model. It is fed through multiple data sources. And it changes itself, in the, and the, the decisions it makes changes as the data set progresses. 
Now, in our case, uh, at Votero, we sanitize files. We are a content security, zero trust content security company that makes that, that basically we make sure that files that move throughout your enterprise are safe for usage wherever they are, wherever they originated, wherever they land. We don't detect. Um, we don't detect uh, malware in a way that an antivirus does. We sanitize file, files in a way that keeps all files safe wherever they are. So for us, a data set in order to identify, for example, um, one of the attack vectors that is very significant within um, Office documents is macros. How do you determine whether a macro is malicious or not? So one way of doing that, or the old scale, or the old school way of doing that, is static analysis. You analyze what the code does, you look for specific behaviors, and you determine that it is malicious or not. The challenge with that is that some behaviors that you would assume are malicious are actually natural activities that a good macro should be performing. So in order to leverage AI machine learning, we have trained models on an enormous amount of files and macros, both malicious and not, in order to determine whether those macros are good or not. Now, if you think about poison data, if the data set we are using is not, is not good, is not healthy data, the conclusions we would be making would be wrong conclusions. So in our case, if you think about a machine learning model that analyzes um, threat within data, that is fed from S3 buckets and spreadsheets and photos and text. The same goes for you in your enterprise, in your um, mid-market company. When you want to build a, an AI or machine learning model that would be that would make your job more efficient or that would make your product more efficient, you would be collecting a significant data set, you'd be publishing it and uploading it into an S3 bucket, and you would be training machine learning models in order to learn how to, how to come to more efficient and, and, and successful decisions based on that data. However, what we know at Votero is that many files unintentionally are poisoned. Files are um, corrupted. Files are uh, can carry malicious malware on them, even without you know, even by using a, a template that could carry malicious content on it. Now, if the data set that you have uploaded to an S3 bucket, if the photos you've used in order to train your models, if the spreadsheet you've used to contain malicious macros or malicious content, your model will result in the wrong conclusions. This is what I call the, the poison data chain. It starts with poison data. It continues with uh, a poison model that will basically bring you to the wrong conclusions. And it would end up with a malicious model that could actually result in either malicious activity or intentionally wrong data. Caveat here, just for a second before we move on. When I say poison, we all think about wrong data, about malware, about threats, about risk. Poison could also mean privacy-related information. We know because we see that every day. When we look into file content, we see privacy-related information as in PII, healthcare-related information, credit card-related information. All of that can be mistakenly uploaded into your data repository that you use to train the model, and that data can eventually be abused. Um, how does this tie into what we do? So I think that uh, one of the important things that uh, uh, we see as we help our customers around uh, uh, their AI and ML activities is that uh, we, we help them how to make sure that the AI and ML data sets are threat free. And uh, we know that some of those data sets are coming from, as you mentioned, S3 buckets. Some of you, some of the, those uh, data sources are from user collaboration tools. Some of those the data sets are actually coming from um, uh, client facing portals when a lot of data is being uploaded by clients and then eventually being fed into a model that's supposed to help uh, with the customer service 
um, um, like analytics uh, decisions where we should improve. And but as, as we look here, we know how to secure all those data exchanges, all those downloads and uploads uh, pipes and pipelines to actually make sure that every content before it's actually get into the organization is uh, threat free. Uh, and in that way, we know that when it's going to be fed into the AI and machine learning model, it's going to be clean and safe to use and to open source. Right. So our, our challenge back to you, all, uh, you know, our audience, is think about everywhere where files exist within your IT infrastructure, within, within the cloud services you use. Which data sets are you using to train AI machine learning models in order to be more efficient, in order to be more secure? How do you make sure that those files carry the right content, don't carry malicious content, again, malicious being malware or being privacy-related information? We have one way of doing that, right? One way of doing that is sanitizing files on the fly as they move, as our customers are uploading into our portals, as our partners are uploading into our, um, into our systems, as our employees, right, in cyber threat. Our employees are moving data and files between different systems. How do we ensure that that data is safe to use um, and has been sanitized? So maybe some final thoughts before we, we wrap up. Um, and once again, feel free to you know, chat, comments, questions, how, we, how you all are using um, AI and machine learning, how you've been exposed, what are the the, the, the threats or, or, or I'd say attack vectors that you are most concerned of in the context of um, artificial intelligence. And I will tell you that one of the things that has been ongoing for more than two years now in Votero is a full-blown um, research on how we leverage within file security. How do we leverage uh, machine learning for, uh, for the good of our customers? And what is what would be a meaningful usage of AI? Not just a you know not just a nice marketing slogan. And one way we found to do that is to, as I mentioned earlier, to train um, a model that will identify safe macros. And I know it sounds surprising, right? You'd expect me to say identify malicious macros. And no, that's so. What we've actually done is we've said instead of trying to find malicious macros, instead of trying to, to find something that would really guarantee to find a whole lot of false positives, let's try to identify what a safe macro looks like. And let's use machine learning to learn what a safe macro looks like. And that is what we do. And we've used, I can't mention the number, but a an enormous amount of files and macros. And you would be surprised how difficult it is to, to find um, malicious content in different forms and shapes. So we've done the research, we found that, we've trained models on that, and after two years of training models, we have arrived at a point where we feel super confident that the models we've developed provide superior accuracy compared to anything else that the market has seen up until now. So how did we do that? Instead of looking into the, without obviously sharing the secret sauce, with instead of looking into the content of what a, uh, a, uh, a macro actually performs, we look at characteristics, things that can be analyzed. Back to Aviv's point about limitations. Machine learning needs a whole lot of data sets in, in order to be efficient. We use a significant amount of characteristics and features in order to determine whether this macro is safe or malicious. So, so I think it's important to mention uh, um, why it's so powerful to use AI and machine learning in the context of, of uh, what we built uh, as a macro protection. The where AI and machine learning actually excel is where uh, there is uh, strict language and, and not necessarily just natural language. I mean, with natural language is, uh, I think it's, uh, I think two magnitudes like uh, um, a bigger problem uh, rather than the, in strict language, because if you think about macros or uh, it's called the, the vision basic for application, that's the there is a type specification, and it's like saying, yeah, in, in my language now I'm talking VBA, there are only like uh, 26 like uh, words. It's way easier 
actually to uh, uh, work and train model based on that rather than just you know uh, i'm going to build a malware in my own you know in, in english it's like a different kind of magnitude of problem and that's where ai and, and ml actually, actually works very very well as opposed to some other cases and as you mentioned eric the uh, what we did is actually we turned the problem on its head instead of looking for how malicious macro looks like we actually okay we, we know that most of the macros out there use for productivity with, with a lot of organizations like financial organizations and, and production organizations is still using the office like excel spreadsheet macros and actually we know how like benign macros is like and that's how we actually trained that model and we found it's very successful over the last like, two two and a half years uh testing it in the field in lab and then in the field and to Avin's point, I think the question is why, right? Why do we want to find safe macros? Because at the end of the day, when we deliver files, we do not want to render the files unusable uh, by flattening them out and providing files that do not contain what you know the, the, the essential elements. Um, using machine learning, we are now able to provide files that are safe and fully functional. Fully functional to the point where all macros that should be there are still intact. Um, one of the interesting things we've found, and this is, you know, for all of you out there that are now experimenting with, with, with using machine learning, it is not the training the model that takes time. By right? training the model, well, depending on the data set, but training can be quick. It really is the, the collection piece that takes time. It really is sifting through what is the right data set, what is a good data set to use, how do we bring the data from the right sources that are valuable and that are solid and safe that will that will train our model the way we want it to be trained real right? data as opposed to some lab synthetic data we see some of the ml trained models security models out there they're just training on the publicly available tank data uh, or not the real life data which is i think this is the challenge i think if you talk with a lot of machine learning and ai uh, researchers and engineers will tell you one of the tasks that's is to to grab and take and tag the data, and I think this is kind of where everything like uh, uh, depending on. Yeah. So I think we're wrapping up this session. We have a whole lot more. We have hours of more content, but you know we wanted to keep this as short as possible, not to take too much of your day. Uh, we will be you know continuing the series, diving much deeper into technicalities of different types of attacks, different types of defenses, how AI and machine learning can be. Uh, can be leveraged for that, how large language models can be used as well as part of cybersecurity and cyber defense in many different ways. Um, Evan, back on the chat, do we have any questions or comments or anything that um, has been raised that we should address before we wrap this one up? Um, so we've addressed a few of the questions in the uh, in the chat already, um, but I did want to make sure that everybody knows that they can look out for an invite for the next coffee chat or the next coffee talk uh, coming up in July as the next part of this series. Um, yeah, if anybody has any uh, lingering questions, uh, feel free to um, go ahead and post them in the chat. Perfect. So uh, I think uh, uh, also for our next uh, upcoming chat, I think uh, if you have anything that you we want uh, you want us to expand on, uh, would love to do that. Maybe dive into some other topics and some additional topics. Uh, would love to do that. So feel free uh, to reach out and type in what you would like to hear more from us. Uh, yeah. So uh, and of course for any anything, I mean, would have love to actually. Uh, demo our product and of course show you the things that we know how to actually to cleanse and make sure that all the data is coming into your organization is uh, threat free from any source and uh, and of course Eric uh, thank you very much for thank that you. talk yeah this was good this was fun hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.